Wikipedia's results come back to us in an order that might seem random, but is actually their internal page ID order. This honestly doesn't really help us very much because we don't really care about internal IDs for Wikipedia, and that's why we sort these things alphabetically. We're doing that right now with a custom closure. We're saying we load these things, do sorting based on the title of two items. Now, there are a lot of times when doing a custom closure like this one with sorted makes perfect sense. It's exactly what you need. But honestly, more often than not, there's just a natural order to your data. You might say, show new stories, newest items first, or show my uh, phone contacts by last name first, whatever. Um, and so rather than just provide an inline closure like we're doing here, we're instead gonna make our page struct conform to comparable. So we can just sort it using sorted with no extra uh, code behind it. This is fairly easy to do. Uh, we can go back to our result type over here and say that page is codable, yes, but also comparable. And if you recall, conforming to comparable means adding a static function inside here called less than. It takes two pages and returns true if the first comes before the second. And in our case, we'll just do the same thing, pass it straight on to the internal title. So we'll say static func less than, takes a left-hand side page and a right-hand side page and returns a bool. Then we'll do LHS title is less than RHS dot title. And now Swift understands how to sort pages. So we can go back to our uh, sorting code here, remove the custom inline closure. This thing here can just go away and just say sorted. And it'll do the right thing for us. It'll use that function we just wrote to handle sorting, which is much nicer, I think. But before on this screen here, I want to think about uh, how we're showing descriptions. Because right now it says page description here, because it's a placeholder. Um, but we have a description. We have one. It's just buried. And it's buried inside this fairly hideous dictionary, which I didn't really mention earlier, um, intentionally. This thing here contains our description, and it may or may not have a description, and it may or may not have it as a key in there. It's pretty messy. Um, because, you know, the whole thing might not be there. But if it is there, then the key might be missing. It might have anything inside that. And if it isn't missing, the array inside it might be missing. It might have no values inside. It's really, really quite nice to dig through. Uh, now, I don't want to put code to read that inside our Swift UI layouts. So it kind of lets the, uh, the plague spread from Wikipedia's API into the rest of our Swift UI code. And so really the best thing to do is to add the cleanup code here just like having our custom sorting function here as well. Um, we'll say in here that we have, actually let's put it before the function that needs to, we have a description computed property which returns a string and it will try to read the term dictionary. And inside there, attempt to read the description key. And if that works, attempt to read the first item in that array. But if any of those fail, if there is no, nothing in the array, if it can't read the key, or if the whole dic dictionary doesn't even exist, then send back no further information. I love nil coalescing in Swift so much. Anyway, with that done, we can now go back to edit view and replace our page description here text view with page dot description, and it'll do the right thing automatically for us, which is great. Let's give that a quick try now. Uh, let's go somewhere in the north this time, sort of more towards Edinburgh. Towards, not exactly there, but close enough. And hopefully here, ah, oh, look at that, aqueduct, lovely. Viaduct, another aqueduct, and some lovely schools. Anyway, so all sorts happening here, which is great. So that completes edit view at this point because we now have editing for the two values inside our location struct. It downloads data from Wikipedia down here in our fetching code. It then shows different UI, depending on what it's trying to do. And then of course, uh, sends back the new location when it's ready to go. It does everything we need for this project.